Hello, welcome to Technical Drawing 102. So here we're gonna talk a little more specifically about how to do front and rear elevations, either for a set piece or for a prop. Tools needed, pencil, eraser, your scale ruler or an equivalent measuring device, grid paper, and then a straight edge. A few reminders. You wanna be careful and be accurate. If you're using the scale ruler, it's just for measuring and marking. You need a different straight edge. Be sure to work in pencil. And also be sure to leave room for your pencil tip when you're drawing lines. So remember to draw straight lines and make sure that it's 90 degrees when that is needed. Use a metal square or a straight edge to line up on one axis so that the perpendicular axis can be straight or do lots of those little careful markings and then line up your ruler or straight edge. Steps for technical drawing. You're gonna use your scale ruler to mark measurements, then you're gonna use your straight edge to make the line, you're gonna keep repeating that, and you're gonna add labels and measurements either as you go or at the end. All right, so front and rear elevations. Let's get started on this topic. This is where we're gonna create a drawn, accurate piece of information that other people could use to build your set. The front elevations are gonna show the details facing the audience. The rear elevations show the construction, so facing backstage. The same techniques we're going to talk about can be used for side elevations when that's needed to show maybe the side of a piece of furniture um, or other details that would help people know what it looks like to build it. Both of these drawings are going to have the same outside dimensions. Both are going to share aesthetic and practical information, and they will be accurate so anyone could build your pieces and you would be happy that they did that. All right. Front elevations, we're gonna use our one half inch to one foot scale. The finished flat that would get built would be four feet by eight feet. And this um, particular elevation is gonna include details like textures and graphics and other things. We're gonna pretend that we're doing a four bay flat that looks like part of a donut shop storefront. So we're gonna start with our outside dimensions. So there's our scale, there's our total size. On paper, our flat should be two inches by four inches which scales up to four feet by eight feet. And again, I'm using pen just so you can see it more clearly. You should use pencil. All right, so we have a four by eight flat. Now we need to make our window. Um, it's gonna be four feet tall and almost as wide as the flat. And it's painted, not cut. So the window's inset from the edges by four inches. And so notice where that is on the scale. Um, that picture on the right, you can see that four inches over is four little marks to the left of zero. And then if you look at that bottom piece, it shows you where the window placement is along that entire vertical axis. So we're gonna mark our measurements on each side, four inches to scale away from the edge of the flat. And then we're gonna add the lines. So we have straight edges, now our window is appearing. And we're gonna add our measurements so people can see that the window is three feet, four inches wide. This will help the people building your imaginary or real set know exactly how big it should be. And you can do the math there. So three feet, four inches, plus four inches on each side equals four feet. Hooray. All right, now we're gonna add our sign. Same process, we're gonna mark and measure at the chosen location below the window. Uh, we're working two feet from the bottom of the flat. And you can see that it's two feet six to the bottom of the window. Then we're down for our sign. The marks are going to the outsides for us to be able to add those labels and show all the details of what it looks like when it's done. All right, we're almost done. We've accurately measured and marked the flat, the window, the sign, and the measurements. Artistic details should be proportionate, but you don't need to worry too much about the scale. That's a process that will happen more effectively when it's actually getting painted on the backdrop. All right. So to be completely done, we have to label everything and make sure that we explain things that aren't perfectly clear. Um, otherwise, people could start cutting a window in the fat, flat because they think it's meant to be there or forget that the sign has to get flipped around so there's a front and a back to it. Um, or you know, maybe they try to eat the donuts. Oh, boy. All right, rear elevations, same measurements because it's the back of that flat that we just showed the front of. So same scale, same size flat. The details in this case include the framing pieces so that people know how to hold it together. So outside dimensions, same. Um, we're also gonna mark four inches to scale inside the whole perimeter. So remember our window was four inches from the inside of the top. This time we're going all the way around. 
And that's because flats are actually built where it's frames um, made out of wood covered in fabric. And so we're going to have a place to show each of those boards. And you see the multiple markings so that we can line it up. Everything's parallel and perpendicular. Uh, the lines are perfectly placed. And now you can see the frame that holds the flat together. Because it's a big piece of painted fabric, it needs some support. So about every four feet on the back of a flat, you're gonna find some kind of brace. And if you have windows cut out or other things, there'll be additional braces as well. Um, this is technically called a toggle, and it's centered at the four foot mark. So we go to four feet, and then we go two inches to each side of that because it's a four uh, inch wide board. So there's a location for that one by four. And we're gonna place our straight lines, and then we have the cross brace for our flat. And you can see the measurements that show you exactly where that gets put. Which is all well and good, except right now they're just pieces of wood lying next to each other. So that's not terribly helpful. So we're gonna add some keystones. And these are pieces of wood about three inches by five inches. They go on top of that toggle or center brace. They can be made out of leather or other things. Um, it's gonna be a little tricky to draw these. So approximate for the measurement is fine. This is a standard thing that gets built in scene shops. So you just need to be sure that it shows that it's offset from the edge of the flat so that we could attach those two flats that are sitting next to each other together um, on the stage. So again, three, three inches by five inches. We shade them in so we can see that it's a different, different piece of wood. And then we also need to add corner blocks, which do the same thing, but they're at the corners. Um, these are triangular in shape, and they're going to be, again, an inch or two from the edge of the flat, so there's room to screw things together um, when we build it. We have to turn those marks into triangles, because that's how they get built. And then we're going to shade those in as well. And then here's our final rear elevation. So it shows everything people need to know to construct it. It's how people know that we're not cutting a window into the flat because there's not a hole and bracing apparent. It's just one full piece of canvas. There we go. Hope that was helpful. If you have questions, as always, just let us know.